David Mize, Chief of DPM's Material Control Division, is here to discuss the coveralls that are worn by many of our employees in the production area. Good morning, David. Good morning, Clay. Pleasure to have you with us. Well, thank you. Pleasure to be here. Well, during the last year, it seems that there's been a change in the coveralls that are worn by our employees. Let's talk about the history. Yes, ma'am. Uh, well, it was kind of a, a two-prong uh, venture to get a contract in place for a, a standardized source of supply. In the past, we used to use the federal supply system, and sometimes they wouldn't have 5X, extra, extra small, fire retardant, and so forth. So that was one side of it. The other side, we wanted a more uh, professional and standardized uniform for the employee availability uh, to have access to them. Okay, so I know there's got to be a difference between the old and the new. Yes, ma'am. What is it? Yes, ma'am. The, the old, the old uh, GSA coveralls are more, uh, they're 65% cotton and 35% uh, polyester. The new ones are 85% cotton and 15% polyester. And they also have the Aniston Army Depot logo. We have them in long sleeve, short sleeve, from extra small to 5X. And uh, they're also OSHA compliant, as well as the GSA, but we have safety and Argo and every, everybody go over them. We can have them personalized with your last name. So that, that's the major differences between the old and the new coveralls. Well, that's a nice feature, having them personalized. Easier to keep up with, I'm sure. Yes, ma'am. Well, let's talk about the procurement process. How did they end up here on our property? It's, uh, well, first of all, we work with the supervisors in the call centers to make sure the employees that want them get them. We don't do a blanket purchase because it would be basically a waste of money if the employees don't want to wear them. So we work with the supervisors to get what employees want them, then the and then their size, how many pair they would like, do they want them personalized with their name on them, and then once we get to that point, we do a purchase request in LMP that goes to a DOC to be transferred over to a purchase order to the contractor, which is UMI, Uniform Manufacturing, Inc., and then at that point, depending on the size of the order, quantity, how many is personalized, so forth, you're looking at about 14 to 21 days before the coveralls come in. Once they come in, they have to be put into Attics, the autom Automated Tool Inventory Control Tracking System. Once they're put into Attics, then the employees in that uh, call center supervisor is contacted with the name employees that have their coveralls ready so they can go pick up their coveralls. So please don't <laughs> come down there looking for your coveralls until your supervisor tells you they're ready if you get some personalized coveralls. <clears throat> Excuse me. With that said, we do have coveralls on stock like this that are not personalized. If you would like just the ANAD logo and not your, your name on them, we have these on in stock now. Okay, so David, I'm very curious to see what the difference is. So at some point, are you gonna show us, tell us about this display? Uh, um, you, you mentioned having long sleeves, short sleeves, personalization, fabric. So in the past, employees have uh, whenever they wanted them to be shortened, they modified them themselves, and I assume that was a no-no. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, employees are responsible for the accountability and the condition of the uh, coveralls. When I say condition, I don't mean normal wear and tear. You get a stain, hydraulic fluid, so forth. I'm talking about cutting off the legs, making shorts out of them, <laughs> and so forth. That it, That is part of the employee's responsibility, as well as the uh, accountability they will be on your annual hand receipt for your tooling. That has to be done yearly with your supervisor and turned into the uh, tool crib. So accountability and condition, again. And that's true for government property as a whole. We are responsible for it. So same would apply to coveralls, tools, and, and things of that like. So how many pair of uh, coveralls are employees issued? Well, it, we, we focus first on the welding areas, the cadmium type areas, and they, have gotten 14. We just ordered them 14. For the, the, per, the obvious purpose, I have them one a day for a week, and then while they're being laundered, they can have a, another pair every day. Now, the artisans can get up to 14 pair themselves. That that's, is up to them. We just got 14 per for the welders, but the artisans, they can get up to 14 short sleeve or long sleeve, mix and match. Okay, so how uh, do all of our workforce, all the employees who really require them, do they have them? So all the not, not the new ones yet. Okay, we're we're actually still in process at this time. We've received over six thousand of the new coveralls from UM, UMI. 
Uh, with that said, that covers approximately 366 employees. Okay. Okay, that's still a large number. So that leads me to my next question. What's the cleaning process like? The, the cleaning process, they're picked up, <clears throat> excuse me, every morning, Monday through Thursday, from uh, Building 190, picks them up from all the bins across the industrial complex. Then they carry them to the, uh, I believe it's 467 laundry. Mm -hmm. And normally that same day, that afternoon, they're returned. Okay. Cleaned. Okay, okay. So that's a good thing that they can't be cleaned here on the property versus employees actually having to take them home to launder. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So because uh, you mentioned earlier employees are, uh, they're signed out to employees as soon when they come to the tool crib or through their supervisor, they sign, they're responsible for them. So they actually sign a document saying I received X amount of coveralls. Yes, So are there any other responsibilities that employees have to adhere to? It's mainly the, just the accountability to keep up have that count if you if you are issued six you need you'll have six on your hand receipt you're responsible for six pair and then the condition again not the working condition normal condition but cutting off the legs making them the tank tops and so forth you can't you can't do that you, 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 no no <laughs> correct. so i mean you should turn them in with normal wear and tear uh don't be spray painting things on the back mm -hmm. and cutting the legs mm -hmm. off and so forth. Mm -hmm. So David, if they are uh, just through normal wear and tear, is there a replacement process? How do they get new ones? Yes, ma'am. Uh, if Now, if they have a pair like this that is not personalized, they can simply just come to 421 Safety and Respiratory and have it swapped out. Turn in the, uh, the damaged one and you'll get a new pair. If they're personalized, we kind of go have to go back to that process that we had talked about earlier with the purchase request and LMP transferred over to a purchase order sent to the uh, UMI to have those personalized coveralls made. You're looking at that 14 to 21 day mark to get them replaced. Okay, well coveralls is just one of the staples that uh, the Safe and Respiratory uh, Supply Store offers. Uh, let's talk about some of the other things employees might find there. At Safety and Respiratory, they, they cover a, a broad range of items covering the industrial complex from all your PPE, uh, protective posturing equipment, helmets, self-breathing container and apparatuses, masks, gloves, uh, bump caps. There's 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 a lot of things that safety respiratory okay. so coveralls, uh, uh, earplugs. But under your umbrella, there's a lot of things you're responsible for. Even the uh, Eyeglasses, yes, safety glasses, okay, and the shoes. So if there are things related to PPE, they can still call your organization. Yes, that, that's definitely true. I mean, uh, services covers it from building 105 where they do safety shoes from composite to steel toes, small arms versus the industrial complex. Uh, safety glasses, normal and prescription safety glasses, 105. 103K yard uh, covers your, your, from your dry sweep to your batteries, your broom, so forth. 521 tool crib, tooling, TMD, 421, that's what we're really discussing today is your PPE, your coveralls, your air, air plug, so forth. 524K yard does the chemicals. So again, they're very broad, offering a wide variety of uh, uh, supplies to our workforce and tenant organizations. Okay, good deal. Is there anything else, David, you'd like to share? Uh, yes, ma'am, I, I, I would. Uh, I would like to give out a, a huge thank you and, and grateful toward a services branch for their commendable and greatly appreciated stewardship of government resources in the over, overall life cycle logistics during these unprecedented times of COVID-19. Everyone, if you've watched the news at all, you've seen what has happened across the world and, and that has also happened with our supply chains, transportation, uh, operations and so forth. So our, our requirements in PPE such as Lysol, bleach, masks, so forth, went through the roof when everybody else had those <laughs> same demands and requirements. So my, our folks, our depot team and services was, was really spot on in uh, uh, keeping up with those requirements and working diligently to get our workforce what they needed. You ever see a marathon where people are taking calls with donations? They got a phone here and there. That, that was That's our team. team. That was my team and services. So I want to give a, a big thank you to everybody in services. Right? Well, David, I'm going to echo that because last week or last morning's show, you received some recognition for this. So kudos to you and also for the team for the job that they're doing to ensure that employees do have the 
tools and the things that they need. We noticed here in some of the belt and some on some of the floors, there's been additional uh, disinfectants, uh, hand sanitizers that have been placed, and I'm sure that your team is responsible for that. Yes, ma'am, and and we're working at actually getting better with more modernized like hand sanitizers the 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 ones you see at the hospitals that you don't touch right and, and so forth we're looking at getting them across the industrial complex but we're still getting over that hump if you will from mm -hmm. what had happened mm -hmm. uh and and i appreciate the workforce uh, uh working with us right. there for a time. I know I, you know, we had sent out some all users emails, not even to get rid of your personal size bottles because <laughs> we were able to get them in gallon and five gallon jug, but not the little personal size. So like in my area of operation, we actually had a gallon jug with a little funnel on top. So you could fill your, you know, and, and I know a lot of other area of operations done that as well. So again, thank you to the workforce for bearing with us and, and working together as a team as we should during times like this. We appreciate what you do. David, uh, if employees have additional questions following today's show, who should they contact? Uh, they, they can contact Mr. John McGriff at 3788 or myself, uh, David Mize, at 6859. Okay. Well, David, thank you so much for stopping by this morning. You are a wealth of information, and we will see more of you on the show. Thank Joseph, you. thank you again.